There's very little in life that's worth achieving that isn't hard. Those things that are hard are hard because most people can't do it. That's why we say they're hard. If you work at it and achieve it, and you continue that throughout your life, you are distinguishing yourself among others around you by what you have achieved. And those who rise the highest are those who keep solving hard things. Leads me to the famous quote from John Kennedy, we choose to go to the moon. Not because it's easy. they are easy, but because they are hard. Zero. Hard work dissipates ignorance. Uh, you said you're told it, so you have to believe it. I will never require you to believe anything. Good for you. <laughs> it will only ever be. It will only ever be about how compelling is the evidence to you. If you have religious faith, then whatever anyone says about the world wouldn't matter to you. If it does matter to you, then you're, that's a different kind of contract that you're taking out on information. And that contract is, there could be data out there that would conflict with your religious philosophy, and then you'd have to go along with it. But that's not what actually happens. They, there's a pretense that data matters, and then they filter it, reinterpret it, ignore parts of it, slice and dice it so that it all fits in to the religious philosophy. So it requires blinders in order to make that happen. Copernicus could not shake the idea of orbits that were per perfect circles. They couldn't shake that. Why would God design a universe with a shape that wasn't geometrically perfect? So even Copernicus putting the sun back in the middle of the known universe had circular orbits. And since the orbits are not circles, they actually differed from predictions on the night sky. So that was a problem at the time. It's like Copernicus, this might work, but it still doesn't fit. The epicycles are doing much better. And so, so it wasn't instantly taken up, it's including the resistance, the church resistance, of course, because yes, Earth, yes. Earth wasn't in the middle yeah. anymore. Our counterpart to what I think you're describing is the urge to try to presume nature was perfect and then account for it with everything we know that is. I see myself as a responsible educator. And in that role, if you want to put your creation philosophies into a science classroom, I'm going to stand at the gate and prevent that. Science is about taking the unknown and figuring it out. Right. Intelligent design, as presented in the Dover trial, and as is widely discussed, takes what is unknown and then doesn't try to figure it out. It says we can't figure it out and ascribes it to a higher intelligence. Right. End of story. It's not science. Therefore, it does not belong in the science classroom. You want to put it somewhere, it's fine. Put it in philosophy class or history class or religion class. It's not science. You go online and in a, in a Google search, you type God, gods worshipped by humans. There's a tally of all the gods ever worshipped by humans in the history of civilization. And it just goes screen after screen after screen after screen. So when you say, do you believe in God? Is there, is it, which God? Is it Zeus? Is it Poseidon? Is it the, the Jewish God? Is it the Christian God? Because the Jewish God from the Old Testament is filled with wrath and smoting and smiting and whatever the, the, the past tense verb is. And so, to, and the New Testament, the, God is kinder, all right? A little nicer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you look at all of this and you say, is that the God you want me to comment on? Or is there some other God? Typically, it's the Judeo-Christian blend there. In that context, I would say in my studies of the universe, I, I value evidence and I don't see evidence for any kind of um, active intelligence or power over anything. The more I look at the universe, um, just the less convinced I am that there is something benevolent going on. So if you, if, if your concept of a creator 
is someone who's all powerful and all good. That's not an uncommon pairing of powers that you might describe to a creator. All powerful and all good. And I look at disasters that afflict Earth and life on Earth. Volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, um, congenital birth defects. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable on Earth by natural causes. And I just ask, how do you deal with that? So philosophers rose up and said, if there is a God, God is either not all powerful or not all good. I have no problems if as we probe the origins of things, we bump up into the bearded man. If that shows up, we're good to go, okay? Not a problem. There's just no evidence of it. And this is why religions are called faiths, collectively. Because you believe something in the absence of evidence. That's what it is. That's why it's called faith. Otherwise, we would call all religions evidence. But we don't, for exactly that reason. So, so I, I'm, I'm given what everyone describes to be the properties that would be expressed by an all-powerful being in the gods that they worship, I look for that in the universe and I don't find it. So I, I, I remain unconvinced. But if you've got some good evidence, bring it, bring, bring it, <laughs> bring it, okay? And so I don't, I don't lead with that information because what I believe should be irrelevant to anyone. It's not about me. It's about the real world. I, I gotta like try to like use your logic back at you. Uh -huh. But don't we define what, what is good and what is bad? So we see a tsunami wipe out a whole bunch of people and we're, we're as human beings going, wow, that's bad because we define what bad is. Maybe in God's brain, eyes, whatever the hell, that, that's not bad. Well, but except you defined what God is. Oh boy. Wow. Now that's, you did it. That's so ridiculous. why why do you have the power to define who and what God is, right. but not have the power to define what good is? Yeah, my point is we, we just don't know it all. Not even oh, close. Oh, 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 sure. So, so therefore, uh, if you're going to say God actually is good, and a quarter million people dying from an earthquake and a tsunami and, and other natural disasters, right. um, and God presumably has control over that, and God is good, then we have to then say, God works in mysterious ways, right? Yeah, so there that, you go. That's the, but people only say that when their understanding of God fails them. When right? it's a, something bad. No, no, when they can't <laughs> understand it, they say, well, God works in mysterious right, right, ways. Right, but yeah, somehow, in these other ways, you did understand him. Right. How are you saying, well, this is the this is the handiwork of God. Is you doing God's work? God wants you to do this. Somehow you know God's motives every other way. Mm -hmm. When but when a quarter million people get wiped out, God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. Why do you why why do you even claim to have access to God's mind in some contexts and not others? Right, exactly. Just admit you have no clue right. and get on with life. That's how I look at it. As you ascend from the earth and look at our temporal, spatial, and organizational uh, uh, insignificance in terms of the scale of the cosmos, if you're gonna say that the same person who made the cosmos cares about your life on this earth, the bigger we know the cosmos to be, the more of an expression of hubris or ego that that represents and then you you end up drifting away from the idea that the person who made the universe cares about your prayers and so it's a it's a plausibility argument it's, I wouldn't call it a scientific experiment but in science you always have to make a judgment as to what is sensible given the information and what is not and the bigger is the universe the less sensible a personal God seems as a scientist if you are religious and you say something that is patently, objectively false, I will tell you. Hmm. I'm not gonna respect your views if they're objectively false. As I owe that to your intellect to explain to you what is objectively true in the face of what you think is true, want to be true, or wish for, for what is true. Um, 
I, I respect your freedom to think whatever you want. But if you're gonna make a decision based on something that's objectively false, that emanates from your belief system, no matter what it is, I'm obligated, as an educator, I say, you know, that's not gonna work. Or here's why it's not gonna work. Well, you're advising someone else who doesn't know better. And that's not in their best interest. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. It's not that religious people mess up society. That's the wrong way to look at this. The issue is dogma in any form messes up society. You yeah. can have political dogma, yeah, which is, <clears throat> has no less guilt messing up society as religious dogma. The issue here is dogma. You fight dogma. And if it happens to be under the guise of religion, fine. But as an educated scientist, atheist, if you're going to go out there and fight religious people, you're really fighting dogma, where people want you to believe something in the absence of evidence and make that policy, make that educational curricula, uh, make legislation based on that. That's where you have problems. And that's where you get Nazism. That's where you get the, the um, uh, Lysenkoism. Yes. That's where you get all of these isms that have risen up that had some of them even had some some patina of being academically derived but when you actually part the curtains there is dogmatic in, invocation of rules established by some committee of people who decide how they want you to think about all the various topics I, I agree when when my impact would be people learn from me in a way that they are empowered by what I taught them. So that when they think of what they learned from me, they no longer think of me. They think of their own base of understanding of how this world works. And so that I become irrelevant from that um, exercise. And because if people say, this is true because Tyson said so, then I failed. That's not how you teach someone. That's, that's teaching them by authority. I don't, you know, that's, no. I wanna, I, I wanna teach you how to think about the world, and then you say, I have a new way to understand the world, and you just run off, don't, you don't even look back, because a new level of hunger has descended upon you, and methods and tools to feed that hunger are now accessible to you. So my impact would be that others are impacted and they don't even remember that I had something to do with it. On my tombstone, I want the epitaph, be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. That's Horace Mann. I can get behind that. And a victory for humanity is not a victory for yourself. It's not statues, it's not your name, it's just humanity's better off. Any of us, I think, should want the world to be a little better off for you having lived in it. That doesn't mean people praising you, that that's, no, not even about that. But what do you have to give with no expectation of return? The measure of whether you learn something is not whether it was obviously true to you upon first glance. If you'd like to support me in creating more of these types of videos, you can do so by donating to the channel through our Patreon page. This will also give you early access to videos and channel updates. You will also get access to our Discord server, where you can participate in discussions and debates with other members of our community. You can check it out by clicking the link in the video description.